Stanislaw Robert Liberta here, and in this lesson, we're gonna be making something a little like this. So for this animation, we're gonna be using M Freeze Frame Action from Motion VFX. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I've done right here is I've placed my clip into my timeline. And this is about a 10 second clip, but we're only gonna be using the front part of it. And I wanna review my clip and pick a frame that I know I'm gonna be using as the freeze frame. And I like this frame right here. I'm gonna create a marker using the keyboard shortcut M. And what that's done is denoted that that is a marker on that particular frame. That's how I know that's the frame I wanna use. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna rearrange my panel and my workspace here just a little bit to make it a little bit easier for me to make my frames and my masks. turn skimming off for right now and let's make this a bit smaller and I'll also open the inspector because I'm going to need that in a little bit. I'm going to save this as a workspace so I can come back to this later. So I'll come up to window workspaces and you can see I've already saved a couple of them. I can save this as a workspace and I'll call this one freeze frame. So now anytime I'm coming back to this I will have this exact workspace and it'll make things a little bit easier for me. So I've got my clip, I've got my marker, and I'm gonna choose M freeze frame action number 27. I'm gonna drag that right into my timeline. If I play this back, we can see it's animating the whole clip. You know, that's what exactly it's supposed to do, but we wanna split this up a little bit. I want her hands to be separated from this back. So I'm gonna choose this frame as my freeze frame, and I'm also going to drag out this clip. And if I drag out this clip, here's what's gonna happen. When we set this as our freeze frame, when we come out of it, it's going to go right back to the frame that was playing underneath, right? So you can see there's a bit of a jump towards the end. Well, I don't necessarily want that. I want this to come back, if it comes back, to start up right from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna create a hold frame using Final Cut Pro by pressing Shift H. And what that's done is it's created a hold frame about 10 seconds or so. My total duration is going to be about eight seconds. I always like to leave myself a little bit extra room at the end for handles. I'll trim this back to about 10 seconds. And when I come out of this, right, if I drag this out further, if I come out of this, this should go back to that same exact frame. Okay, so I've set my freeze frame. The next thing I wanna do is cut out my mask. I'll change this magnification to about 50% and activating the M freeze frame, I'll use the mask tools. I'm just gonna get in here and start drawing out my mask. Even though some of these points are fairly straight. I'm adding in curves just so I have a little play and wiggle room. The next thing I'll do is I'll save this in case I wanna make any changes in the future. I'll call it layer one. And I'm gonna work with this mask just a little bit. I'm gonna open up my inspector and my titles, turn off this wiggle position, and I'll also change this mask scale. I feel like that's a little big. We'll make it about 110. Scale rate of three. And I'll turn off the rotation. The next thing I'm gonna do is work with this color a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just turn down this colorization mix to about 68. And that's just gonna brighten things up uh, a hair more and give a little bit more color. Mix down this comic to about 6%. We're gonna need a second layer for this hand and phone. I have a couple ways I can do this. I can just duplicate this or drag a new one down. Because I know that this freeze frame template is perfect right there and my timing is all set up perfect, I'm gonna select both of them and hold on to the Alt Option key and just drag it to the right. And what that's effectively done is it's made a complete duplicate. Now you'll notice that here I have the freeze frame hold and here I don't. That's just a display. If I wanna hide that, 
I just hit Command R to show or hide that. So if you're looking to get that to go away, just Command R. With our first selection, let's group this into a compound clip. So I've selected both of them and I'm holding on to Alt and hitting G. And I'm gonna call this layer one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. We're gonna select it and I'm gonna call it layer two. You may be asking, why didn't I group it first and then duplicate it? If I did that, any changes I make to the second one would still be referencing the same internals of this first one because it's a copy of this. But now these are two independent ones, so that's why that's important. I'm gonna drag this one up on top here. And if I play this back, effectively, we're gonna see the same thing we just saw before because they're just stacked right on top of each other. But that's not necessarily what I want for the second one. So for the second one, I'm gonna double click inside. And I'll play this back. And this one already has half the things set up for me. I've got my current freeze frame set up. I have a mask. This isn't the mask I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to create a new mask. I'll select the mask path options and clear that mask. It's a little hard to see where this hand and this phone is. So we're going to change the coloring of this right away. So I'm gonna come into the mask shadows level and really pull that down. I think I'll crush that all the way down to zero. And now I can see everything very clearly. With my current frame selected, now let's work and cut out these hands. So just like before, I'll use my mask tools. I'm going to just cut out these hands. I'm gonna leave myself just a little bit of overhang. And the reason for that is because we're going to use this to kind of cover up some of this extra area so we don't see the, uh, the fingers from underneath. Now you can see my handle isn't wanting to go where I need it to go, and that's okay. I'm gonna click right here and create a point. And holding onto Alt Option, I can drag one of the tangents independent from the others. Clean these up, holding onto Alt Option. I'll move this guy up to the top, it's out of my way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I want to isolate this from the background. The reason why we need to do that is if I play this back, this is giving us just the hand and we're gonna clean this up in a little minute too. But if I come back to my original comp and I play this back, now we're only seeing the hand. And the reason for that is because that clip is fully opaque and doesn't have any transparency. So let's go into this and let's work with this a little bit more. Got my M freeze frame action. And to isolate this, let's go into the inspector and choose isolate mask. And right away, I'll come back to that original comp. And if I play this back, well, now that's starting to get somewhere. We have some work to do around the edges of our mask, a little bit of cleanup. I can see it's a little rough. So let's go ahead and do that next. Since we're working with our phone, let's continue that and I can kind of finesse some of these points a little bit more. I think I'll change my magnification to about 150 and I'm gonna clean up some of these paths. So to change this to a bezier from a smooth handle, I'm just holding on to command as I'm dragging it. And we'll make a few more points. Okay, I feel that looks a lot better. I can go ahead and save this mask as well. So I'll make a lot of folders specifically for all my assets in a project. And I feel like it's a great way to come back to a project. And if I need to change anything, it makes it very easy to do so. Let's work with this a little bit more. I wanna make sure that my position and my scale are right. And I think I'm gonna change this to about 120. So this will be a little bit bigger and we'll move it over. And let's make sure I have that fit. And let's see how this is starting to look. I can see that my edges are a little too harsh. It looks a little funky. So we're gonna go into this M freeze frame and we're gonna work with the blur outline range and the blur range. And what this is going to do is just soften things up. So you can see as I'm changing this, right? We have our outline range and our blur range. And this is like our feather control. Looks like that's a little too soft right here. 
So I'll give it just a little bit more from this mask and dial down that range. Okay, so we'll come back to our first layer one and we'll do the same with this side. I also have some particles going on here. I think I'll turn those off first. Those are a little distracting. I'm gonna come down to the bottom of the inspector in the M freeze frame 27 in layer one. I'll turn those off. I'll come back up to the top and work with this blur range. Kind of soften that out just a bit. Now, the other thing I notice as I come back to my original comp, the screen is lighting up her phone, but I'd like to add a little bit more dimension to that. We're going to add a gradient light from M freeze frame and place that in here. I'm going to go back into my layer one compound clip and in my generators and titles, we're going to choose this gradient light. And this is a really interesting effect because the way it washes over the pixels on our screen, drag this out to the full duration. And we've got these two control pucks. And this is effectively where a gradient is coming from. So we know that the phone is down here. So I'm just dragging this down over here. I'll drag this guy. Effectively, I'm mimicking the direction of where that phone was. I don't think that red is going to work, but a bit of a blue, right? And another tip is depending on how dark you make that gradient light, it's only adding to the scene. So we can really dial in some specific colors. And I think I'll make that a little bit darker and drag that up just a little bit higher, just so it comes across half her face there. And we'll back that up. I'm gonna change this back to 50% view just so I can kind of see everything in its entirety. And as I'm reviewing this, I can see just part of her hand is cut off there. So I'm gonna go back there and fix just a couple of these masks. Playing this back, let's take a look at what we've got so far. And that's looking good. That's looking really interesting. I feel like at this point, we can go ahead and add in our text elements. And so that's gonna be at the bottom of our M freeze frame action pack where we have our different typography. Drag this right onto my project. And I want that coming in right when my animation starts. So I feel like right about there is a good spot. I'm gonna move my playhead up further and just replace out my names. And let's play that back. And I think that's looking pretty nice. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna put some text and the reason why we had these kind of separated was one, so we can get two different masks out of here. But check this out. If we use a second text effect, like this typography eight, I'm gonna drag this into my timeline right above the last one. And with my text selected, I'll drag this to right about here. I make this a little bit bigger. And what I can do with this is drag this in between our two different layers. So effectively, you can see what's happening is it's coming like right behind her hand there. And so now we can kind of make this a little bit more interesting by having it stacked between these. Let's go ahead and fill out our typography. So this is the message. I'll change this and to waiting for. I also use this puck. I think I'll change the color to a bit of a darker yellow orange. And this is a C Lem Fandango film. So we've got our different text elements in here. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a widescreen effect. And this widescreen effect, I think I'll place on top of everything. And you can see what it's doing by default. It's kind of cutting across and that's pretty interesting. I, I think I really like that. In fact, I could probably even put this right down here. And now you've created a completely different kind of look, right? So this is pretty interesting by itself. But what if we didn't want that? What if we wanted a classic kind of widescreen effect? Well, I can come into this widescreen and we're going to change the rotation to zero. I'll turn off that wriggle because we don't want it moving around. 
and then we're going to change this widescreen size a little bit bigger. I think I'll make this 0.85. So let's play that back. But we're not limited to this, so we can do a few more things if we wanted. We can add some off-screen flares, just like we did our other clips. And I can choose that off-screen flare and flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. And I like that. I feel like that works out really nice. It kind of balances things out. So that's a quick, easy way to put together a full comp like this, just using Final Cut Pro and Motion VFX's M Freeze Frame Action Pack. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.